Simon Lee, the old huntsman, W. Wordsworth. Simon Lee is now decrepit, and despite a hard-working life, he is left in poverty without the ability to provide a living for himself and his wife. The speaker is able to help out in a small way, but is overwhelmed by the immense gratitude shown for just a simple kindness. There appears to be an injustice here, and it is worth reflecting upon. Simon Lee, the Old Huntsman In the sweet shire of Cardigan, not far from Pleasant Ivor Hall, an old man dwells, a little man, tis said he once was tall. Full five and thirty years he lived, a running huntsman merry, and still the centre of his cheek is red as a ripe cherry. No man like him the horn could sound, and hill and valley rang with glee, when echo banding round and round the halloo of Simon Lee. In those proud days he little cared for husbandry or tillage, to blither tasks did Simon rouse the sleepers of the village. He, all the country could outrun, could leave both man and horse behind, and often ere the chase was done, he reeled and was stone blind. And still there's something in the world at which his heart rejoices, for when the charming hounds are out, he dearly loves their voices. But oh, the heavy change, bereft of health, strength, friends, and kindred see, old Simon to the world is left in liveried poverty. <clears throat> His master's dead, and no one now dwells in the hall of Ivor. Men, dogs, and horses, all are dead. He is the sole survivor. And he is lean, and he is sick. His body dwindled and awry, rests upon ankles swollen and thick. His legs are thin and dry. One prop he has, and only one. His wife, an aged woman, lives with him near the water waterfall upon the village common. Beside the moss-grown hut of clay, not twenty paces from the door, a scrap of land they have, but they are poorest of the poor. This scrap of land he from the heath enclosed when he was stronger, but what to them avails the land which he can no, till no longer? Oft working by her husband's side, Ruth does what Simon cannot do, for she with scanty cause for pride is stouter of the two. And though you with your utmost skill from labor could not wean them, Tis little, very little all that they can do between them. Few months of life has he in store, as he to you will tell, for still the more he works, the more do his weak ankles swell. My gentle reader, I perceive how patiently you've waited, and now I fear that you expect some tale will be related. O oh, reader, had you in your mind such stores as silent thought can bring, O oh, gentle reader, you would find a tale in everything. What more I have to say is short, and you must kindly take it. It is no tale, but should you think perhaps a tale you'll make it. One summer day I chanced to see this old man doing all he could to unearth the root of animal tree, a stump of rotten wood. The mattock tottered in his hand, so vain was his endeavor, that at the root of the old tree he might have worked forever. You're overtasked, good Simon Lee, give me your tool, to him I said, and at the word right gladly he received my proffered aid. I struck, and with a single blow the tangled root I severed, at which the poor old man so long and vainly had endeavored. The tears into his eyes were brought, and thanks and praises seemed to run so fast out of his heart, I thought they never would have done. I've heard of hearts unkind, kind deeds with coldness still returning. Alas, the gratitude of men hath oftener left me mourning.